Hey, it's Oliver from Team Lux, and today we're going to be installing a Reba Racing steering system on a Sea-Doo Spark. What you're looking at here is the complete Reba Racing steering system for an IBR setup on a Sea-Doo Spark. Comes with the steering system, the handlebars, grips, and then both throttle controls and a start switch. So the first step is obviously going to be exposing all the plastic, removing them so that we see what we're working with. For this, you're going to need an 8mm socket and a T30 Torx head screwdriver. So as you can see, we've removed all the coverings off the spark. You got the exposed wires and switches and the handle assembly, which is now the next step in the process that we're going to remove all that and loosen it all up. So now we're going to begin disassembly. For this, you're going to need a 5.5 millimeter socket. I wanted to get a close up to show you guys how these are held in. steering system in, which are 10 millimeters. They're staring right at you. You need to be careful when you're doing this not to damage the magnets. The wiring harness that connects the throttle position sensor and all those connectors on the back side. Hey, when you're removing this uh, steering system, don't forget the zip ties holding the wiring harnesses on the back side. So the next step once you get it pulled out is you want to remove the magnets. Uh, the instructions say to use a small pry screwdriver to pull them off. But as you can see, I busted mine old plastic heat, you know. So be careful pulling them out. But don't worry, in case you're worried about breaking it, I think I'm just going to be able to use a little silicone and glue and fit them into the new steering system without a problem. So. The next step is to remove the OEM uh, bushing. I believe this is the culprit of the notorious steering squeak. But the instructions say to locate the middle of the three notches and that if on yours, if it's connected, that you need to take a little utility knife and cut right along here along the seam. Mine was already broken due to being old, so mine just is able to pull out. All right, next step is we're now ready to install the Reaper Racing steering system. First step is remove the rubber grommet that comes in the steering system. Then with an Allen wrench, remove the steering system bracket. We're going to then run the wires through the steering system. As you notice, I installed the magnets I talked about earlier being broken. They were able to just push in, snap in tight and they're going to be held in place on the back side of the steering system, so I'm not worried about them falling out. Next step is just reassembly. We're going to put all the bolts back together. Um, the instructions say to use blue Loctite. I only have red, which is okay. It's just a little bit stronger. I don't plan on taking this out, but here we go. Reassembly. The next, next step is going to be installing uh, the handlebars so we have something to mount all our switches to. Just take an Allen, remove these four screws. They didn't come very tight from the factory, which helped with ease and installing. So the next step is installing the throttle uh, switches into the new housings. And in case you get them mixed up like I did, there's a simple way to figure out which one is which. So on the left is the IBR and the right is the throttle. And you'll notice that the switches match up. So if you turn it upside down like that, it won't fit. But 
this is how the proper installed with the stickers, the label sticking out. And that's how you'll know which one lines up to which one. So we're going to install the um, throttle cable and the IBR lever. Both are installed the exact same way as in the instructions. You're going to need a sharp knife and you're going to cut off this tab and this tab so it'll fit into the housing. And then you're going to remove the white plastic coverings. So here we go. You're going to cut this flush. Don't worry about that. If this pops off on you, just put it back together. Okay. Remove the housing. Put the supplied washer in. The thro metal throttle connects just like that. Snaps in place. Flip it around. You might have to take a little tension off the spring, which is okay. Flip it around. And it should slide into place. A little knock. Knock time. And they're finished. All right, now we're going to move into installation of the throttle and the start switch. The start switch comes with its own housing, and we're going to put that one in first. What you need is the original red start button from the factory and the housing. Loosen with an Allen. Lose them. Then in the hole in the front, you're just going to slide the red button like this, and then you're going to place the switch into the housing. It fits perfectly in the notches there. After the start switch, and then we're going to move to the throttle and the IVR. Same Allen size. Alright, so the last step is going to be putting on the handle grips. As you can see, the levers are all mounted onto the handlebar nicely. So I've got these ODI Ruffian grips from River Racing and we're going to put them on. They come with a hand grip, locking caps, 
and an end cap. And they're fairly simple. You just snap on the end caps, slide them on. Put them where you want them. And install the lock lines. And there we have it, the complete steering system installed uh, to include the optional uh, trim system just kind of glued on top because there really isn't a better option right now available. And total time took me about two hours, two and a half hours. And the only tools I needed were hand tools, a Torx 30, a eight millimeter, five and a half millimeter, and a 10 millimeter socket and a couple different Allen wrenches. All right, thanks for watching. If you guys, please like us on Facebook, Team Lugs 